Hey guys, so today I thought I would just do a kind of random experimental tutorial so I know exactly what lips I'm going to use. The rest of it, however, is a mystery even to me so yeah, stay tuned if you want to see a possible disaster. Okay, so I'm just going to prime my eyes with MAC Paintly Paint Pot as per usual. If you don't have a paint pot like this, then um, if you know that you have a concealer that doesn't crease, that's also a really good option. Just make sure that you powder it before applying the rest of the eyeshadow so that it doesn't kind of stick. And I'm just going to run a little bit of the ALF HD Under Eye Setting Powder on top of that just so that it smooths down and it's not going to crease later on in the day. So it's taking any big brush and dunk it in there and just pat it into security in place. Okay, so now that we're up close and personal, um, today I think I'm going to use the Steeler in the Light Palette. I do adore this palette. Um, just some really good, different kind of neutral shades with a few shimmers as well. So, obviously I'm going to do what I always do and start out by kind of defining the crease. I think I'm actually going to do it a little bit harsher than I usually do today. So, I'm going to start with an angled brush. This is just a random one from Coastal Scents, I believe. So I'm just going to dunk that in this shade here, which is Bliss. Just put a little bit of that on my brush and start working it into the crease. So almost just kind of drawing a line. And then when I get to the outer corner, I'm just going to bring it here and flick it up. Almost like an eyeliner wing, but obviously eyeshadow. So just kind of creating that basic shape for now. And the same on the other eye. Okay, and now I'm going to go in with that same brush and just take this brown here, which is called Sandstone. So it's a bit darker, still matte, but it does have a few little shimmers in it. Not enough to mean that it's shimmery and it's not going to work though. So doing the same thing. So essentially I am making a cut crease. <laughs> I don't know why I didn't decide to use that terminology before, but that is what this is. So when you get to the outer corner and do that flick, I don't want it to just be down and out like a right angle. Um, I want it to be a little bit more curved, a little bit more feminine. So when you do get to the outer corner, just kind of curve it around a little bit. And then go back in and make that line just a little bit darker. Yeah, that's right, you focus, bitch. Okay, so now that's done and I look kind of crazy, I'm going to go in with a small tapered blending brush, again, Coastal Scents, and just take that first shade that we used, Bliss and just dunk that on the shading brush and just blend that out. Now I'm not blending this down, we're blending it upwards. So kind of taking it further into the crease but not going onto that lid space because we're going to reserve that for something else. Just do the same with the eye, flick it out. Yeah, that is 
that to just blend out the wing a little bit more. I don't want it to be very defined because I'm going to go in with eyeliner later, but I still do want it to be there. So now I'm going to take Bare from the same palette and just pop that all over the eyelid where we didn't place the brown shades just to make that pop. Okay, so that's what that looks like so far. So you could just leave it here and it's basically, well, I think that it's very wearable, but obviously my perceptions of what's easily wearable are a little bit different to most other people's. So I'm just going to go in and blend that out again because I don't think it was blended properly up top. Just an FYI, any tutorials you see from any makeup guru, and I mean any makeup guru, obviously I'm not a guru, but... Most of the footage is blending and most of it will be cut out before you actually see the footage. So don't worry if it takes a while to get these things right. It takes a long time. It's just that what you see in as a finished product is just that it's a finished product. It's been cut and changed so that it looks very flawless, very easy, but in real life it does take a lot longer. And then just quickly going over the lid again with that shade. Now I'm also going to use this as a brow bone highlight because it is lighter than this fake tan skin. Just very subtle. A lot of people's first instinct is to put a lot of shimmer on their brow bone, but oftentimes it can kind of draw the look down. Especially if you are a bit more mature, it will kind of drag down the eye look and that's not what we want. Okay, now I think I'm going to go on to my liner. So what I've been doing recently, I got this product from Inglot. It's called the Duraline. And it, I think it's very similar to the Stila Stay All Day liquid thing that you get with the metallic eyes eyeshadow. But this is the absolute bomb diggity. So basically this you can mix with anything, a powder, a pigment, a glitter, anything and it will turn it into a liquid and you can use it as a liner or anything that you like and it stays on for a very, very long time. So lately I've been mixing that with the MAC pigment in Copper Sparkle which is this beautiful shade. Um, it's just really, really flattering, really easy to use. I find it a lot easier to use this combination with a liner brush than I do to use just like a normal liquid liner like the NYX one that I always tend to go to. So basically I just take a bit of this pigment and just pop it onto my little palette which I'm going to scoop out now without doing it on camera because otherwise it'll be a disaster. So I scoop out just a little amount like this, not too much but just enough that I will have some excess to go over the line that I create. And then I just take one drop of this, or two drops, and just pop that on top. And then it is just a case of mixing it together. So you can see almost straight away the powder transforms into this liquid. And it's so easy to work with. It's very, very smooth, which you wouldn't expect from a pigment, which are usually quite chunky. But there you go. Now, this isn't going to be the most pigmented mixture because I used a lot of liquid and not as much um, pigment. But I've just coated my normal, what is this? A 211 brush from MAC, just a normal liner brush. Oh, God. Have I ever done liner on camera without stuffing it up? No. <laughs> so I start in the middle of my eye and work out. Okay, so now that we've got the baseline, I'm going to do a little wing. I have the biggest struggle ever doing wing eyeliner. Um, I don't know how people do it. <laughs> I personally can't, but I'm going to give it a shot, and if it works, 
then I will have a celebratory drink tonight. Let's try and do this wing a bit better than the other one, and it's already not looking too good. Yeah. Oh god. Okay, so that is the wing liner done. You can see there is a, well, maybe you can see there's a little bit of transfer up here. So I'm going to let that dry and then wipe it off with a Q-tip or a cotton bud, whatever you want to call it. Um, if it's not dry, it'll just ruin the makeup, so. Okay, and then I'm just going to do the normal mascara. I'm using Bow Brown's Smoky Lash Mascara. This is still the sample size. Still don't know what I want to do about it. And I'm just going to do the bottom lashes as well, and then we'll fix up this little mistake. just got this little brush to comb through these lashes because they are being extraordinarily uncooperative. There, that's a bit more separated. <laughs> okay, just take some simple kind to eyes makeup remover and just dab this on the top because I don't know if it's going to follow me out much. Okay, there we go. Don't know if that's improving it or making it worse. This is just a dry Q-tip. Q -tip. They apparently work better than the wet ones, so. Okay, now onto the rest of the face. Oh, wrong way. Okay, so now the rest of the face. I am going to choose a blush that matches my lipstick fairly well. This is the Bobbi Brown blush in Pastel Peach. As you can see, very nice peachy colour. Um, very, I wouldn't say it's hard to wear. I think it's quite complimentary to a lot of people, but it does depend obviously on your preference. Um, so I'm just taking a little bit of that da dabbing, getting the excess off and just starting at the cheeks and working my way back. 
I've already bronzed slightly using the Marc Jacobs bronzer in Tantric. But I felt like this look was kind of girly and didn't really need a huge contour. This is just shadow. Um, that's what it looks like normally, so if you are wondering. This blush is quite pale, so it does take a little bit to build up the colour. So just be patient with it. Okay, and then for highlight, I'm going to use the Bobbi Brown Shimmer Break. Woo! Okay, and then for highlight, I'm going to use the Bobbi Brown Shimmer Brick in beige. It looks like this. So what brush am I going to take? I'm going to take my normal kind of highlighting brush, which is, this is actually a blush brush, but because it's angled, I find that it works really well. And just kind of put it all over there. And I start here and just kind of do a little C. And then same on this side. And then a bit down the nose. Keep it bow. Chin. And a bit more on the cheeks because I can't see it properly. I might even just take that on the end of the brush and highlight under the brow bone. Okay, now for the lips. So... I'm going to take the NYX Retractable Lip Liner. This one is in the colour Citrus. It looks like this. And just line my lips. It broke. Oh, no. Just overdrawing my lips a little bit because I've just been enjoying that lately. I just think it looks better. I don't think there's anything wrong with my lips, but I think for lipstick application, it just, I don't know, just kind of rounds it out and makes it really smooth, so... Just going to make the cupids very a little bit more rounded as mine is quite pointe. <coughs> so yes, that is the base. These lip liners, um, I'm not too sure how I feel about it. I wore this one and the next lipstick that I'm going to put on to work, um, and by the end of the day, I the only bit of the lip liner that had actually stayed and helped the lipstick cling was right around the edge where I pushed it fairly hard so I'm still testing these at the moment I'm not too impressed the color I absolutely adore it's something that I haven't seen before in a lip liner but yeah the formula is not the best so and now I'm going to take the MAC sweet and sour lipstick this is a cream sheen so it is very smooth and nice this is what it looks like so if any of you got a snapchat from me the other day and I had orange lips, this is what I was wearing. Very comfortable formula. Really, really nice. This is one that was part of their limited edition um, All About Orange collection and it was so popular that they actually bought it back. So I obviously had to pick it up. So just
so yeah it's very it's very different from anything else as most of the products I pick up are I don't really want like 5,000 red lipsticks but this I thought was very different and I really really like it I think it's very flattering even it was really good when I had pale skin and now that I have darker skin it still looks good so now I'm just going to top it off with the MAC plush glass in nice buzz which is just kind of a clear shimmery situation so I just dot it on my lips and then rub it in with my finger so I'm not going to get the applicator dirty every single time I switch lipsticks. Um, most people tend to think that these are really, really sticky, but I wore this all day the other day and I found it really comfortable. So, And I'm not usually a lip gloss wearer. I don't usually like them, but this might have to be a new obsession. So anyway, that is the finished look. I quite like it. I think it's very girly, just nice to wear kind of anywhere. You can just do one or the other, obviously. Just like with everything else, you obviously don't have to do exactly the same stuff as me, but I like them both together. I think they complement each other really nicely. The copper really brings out green and hazel eyes, so if you do have those eye colours, I really recommend this pigment. You don't have to use it the same way as I did. Just all over the lid is really beautiful as well. That's how I used to wear it. Um, yes, so that is all I have for you today. If you have any requests or questions, then leave them down below. Um, and yeah, I hope you have a fabulous day and I'll see you later. Bye.